For Vladimir and Francis Sabich, burying their son, who had died from a gunshot wound at the age of 31, was hard enough. Then the person who had been holding the gun turned up to the memorial service. Our moment in crime is the death of Spider Sabich. You might say that Spider Sabich was destined to be a professional skier. He'd spent his entire life skiing and was a natural at the sport. By 1976, many thought that a severe injury Spider had was about to put an end to his career. No one thought that he would be shot to death at the age of 31. Vladimir Peter Sabich Jr. came into the world on the 10th of January 1945 in Sacramento, California. Vladimir had been born prematurely and when his father saw his thin arms and legs, he gave him a nickname that he would be known by for his entire life, Spider. In 1950, Vladimir Sr.'s job with the California Highway Patrol took the family to Kyber's, southwest of Lake Tahoe. Kyber's was an ideal place for the family to live, as Vladimir Sr.'s job as a patrol officer saw him stationed on Highway 50, which runs right through Kyber's. Apart from Spider, Vladimir and Francis had two other children. Mary and Steve. The three children attended school at the one-room Silver Fork Elementary in Kyber's. The summer months meant attending school for the children, but the winter months meant one thing only, skiing. Spider and his siblings learned the sport at the Idlewise Ski Area. The Sabich family were Catholics and attended Mass at the Chapel of Our Lady of the Sierras. Situated opposite the chapel on the other side of Highway 50 was the ski area. After fulfilling their duties as altar boys at the chapel, Spider and Steve would head over to Idlewise. It was there that they were taught European style ski racing by Lutz Einedter, who was a downhill champion in the 1940s, and the brothers soon became known as the Highway 50 boys. By the 1960s, Spider and Steve were among the top junior ski racers in Northern California. After graduating from El Dorado High School in Placerville, both brothers were offered skiing scholarships to the University of Colorado in Boulder. The scholarships were accepted and Spider and Steve were trained by Bob Beatty, the coach of the US ski team. Steve's skiing career was cut short when he developed a knee injury. Spider, who majored in aeronautical engineering, was picked for the national team. Spider skied on the World Cup circuit for its first four seasons. His only World Cup victory occurred in April 1968 at Heavenly Valley, South Lake Tahoe. He decided to turn professional after the 1970 season. Over his career, Spider finished in the top 10 18 times in World Cup and Olympic races. Many credit Spider with popularising skiing in the US. Along with his friend and fellow skier, Billy Kidd, he was the inspiration for the 1969 Robert Redford film, Downhill Racer. Spider's successful career led him to move to Aspen, Colorado in 1971, where he built a house in the gated Starwood community. He earned a pilot's license and would fly his twin-engine Piper Aztec to skiing events all over the country. It was a back injury he suffered in 1973 that had a negative impact on his career. He got the injury while competing in the semi-finals of the giant slalom for the pro title. As he hurtled over the second jump at 50 miles per hour, he caught his arm on a gate and somersaulted onto the back of his neck, causing a compressed vertebra. 
After this, he became vulnerable to more injuries, and his last victory on the pro circuit came in January 1974, at Mount Snow in Vermont. He decided not to compete in 1975, but chose to return in 1976, only qualifying for two races. A bullet would cause a permanent end to his career. Back in 1972, Spider attended a pro-celebrity event in Bear Valley, California. It was there that he met Claudine Longette, a French-born singer and actress. Four years later, Claudine would be held responsible for her boyfriend's death. In 1960, Claudine was working as a showgirl at the Tropicana Resort and Casino in Las Vegas when she met singer Andy Williams. Claudine was only 18 at the time and was stranded on the side of a road due to car trouble. Williams, aged 32, stopped his car in order to assist Claudine. This chance meeting led to a wedding, with Claudine marrying Williams on the 15th of December 1961 in Los Angeles. The couple had three children, Noel, Christian and Robert. Robert was named after their friend, Robert Kennedy. Throughout the 1960s, Claudine regularly appeared on various TV shows, such as McHale's Navy, Hogan's Heroes, Mr Novak and The Andy Williams Show. She also enjoyed success as a singer, recording five albums for A&M Records and three albums for her husband's record company, Barnaby Records. But by 1970, Claudine and Williams had separated and finally divorced in 1975. Just before the couple split, Claudine was quoted as saying, I'm a lucky woman. I have a husband, three beautiful children, and also a man that I love. Don't ask me to tell you his name. But she was, of course, referring to Spider. It didn't take long for Claudine and Spider to become an item. Claudine and her three children soon moved into Spider's Aspen home. For a while, they seemed to be the perfect couple. But at the time of Spider's death, the relationship wasn't going so well. Not long before his death, Spider told his friend, Jim Lilstrom that he wanted to end things with Claudine. He had asked Claudine to move out, but she refused. This resulted in Spider telling Claudine that she had to move out by the 1st of April, 1976. Along came the 21st of March, 1976. Claudine spent much of that day with friends at Little Nell's bar before returning to her boyfriend's home. Spider had attended a training session at Aspen Highlands before meeting up with Bob Beatty briefly. They confirmed their plans to meet later on for dinner. Spider then returned to his home. What follows next is Claudine's version of the story. In the bathroom of his home, Spider showed Claudine how to work his 22 caliber replica of a German Luger as he prepared to shower. The gun had been given to Spider by his brother. Steve was no longer allowed to have a gun in his possession as he had been placed on probation for illegally firing a gun in public. As Spider continued to show his girlfriend how to use the gun, it accidentally discharged, shooting Spider once in the chest. He said his girlfriend's name three times before falling unconscious. Noelle was the only child in the house at the time, and she was ordered to wait outside for the ambulance, which Claudine had called for. Claudine was allowed to accompany Spider in the ambulance. 
Spider died on the way to Aspen Valley Hospital just after 5pm. Claudine wasted no time in calling her ex-husband and Williams flew to Aspen in a private jet. Claudine stayed with the singer John Denver and his wife that night. The Greens, who were neighbours of Spider, looked after Claudine's children. The investigation raised doubts about Claudine's version of events. Claudine had admitted to holding the gun and that Spider was showing her how to use it when it discharged. Investigators found that the gun had been fired at a distance of 6 to 10 feet, which didn't match Claudine's story. Authorities began to believe that Spider stood at the bathroom sink while preparing to shave, as the bullet had entered between two ribs. This suggested that the gun was fired from behind and to the side. Marks on the cartridge indicated that the hammer had fallen several times before it fired. Claudine's diary indicated that her relationship with Spider was falling apart, despite her telling the authorities that the relationship was fine. While the investigation continued, Spider was buried at Westwood Hills Memorial Park in Placerville, California. A memorial service for Spider took place two days after the funeral in Aspen. Claudine and Andy Williams attended the memorial service, causing tension. Then, on the 8th of April, Claudine was arrested and charged at the Pitkin County Court. Williams hired two attorneys for Claudine, Ron Austin, an attorney working in Aspen, and Charles Weedman, a Los Angeles attorney who had defended the women involved in the Manson murders. Claudine was released on bail for $5,000, but the investigation was marred from the start. Claudine was allowed to leave the scene and go with Spider to the hospital. The gun was wrapped in cloth and then stored in the glove compartment of a police car where it remained for days. The cartridge itself was mishandled. A blood sample taken from Claudine showed that she had recently taken cocaine but as the sample was taken without permission from the court, the sample was inadmissible as evidence. Claudine's diary was not allowed to be used as evidence, as it had been found hidden in a drawer without a search warrant. Claudine's trial lasted a week. Many potential jurors were excluded as they felt Claudine was guilty. As the gun and diary could not be used as evidence, Pitkin County District Attorney Frank Tucker hoped to convict Claudine on a lesser charge of reckless manslaughter. Much of the trial focused on the testimony of the only witness, Claudine. When reminded at trial that while in custody she had told the police that she had pointed the gun at Spider and said the words, bang bang, she denied it. Claudine said the gun had been lying flat in her palm and was not pointed in Spider's direction. The prosecutor called 17 witnesses at trial. Andy Williams testified and attended every day of the trial. Two ballistics experts gave evidence. Robert Nicoletti said that the weapon had been fired from a distance of at least four to six feet. The defence argued that the gun had been fired at close range and that its safety catch was faulty, meaning that the trigger would have to be pulled several times in order to fire it. The other ballistics expert, Lama Martin, said that the gun could have been fired without the trigger being pulled. When Martin was asked if the gun had only been able to discharge by pulling the trigger during forensic tests, Martin confirmed that this was the case. At first, the jury was divided. 
Four jurors thought that she was guilty of the more serious charge of reckless manslaughter. Four jurors wanted to acquit Claudine. The rest were undecided. Claudine was eventually found guilty of criminally negligent homicide, a misdemeanour. Judge George Law sentenced her to a $250 fine and 30 days in jail. He allowed Claudine to choose when she served her sentence, believing this would allow her to spend most of her time with her children. Claudine had wanted the court to spare her children from the stigma of having their mother jailed. She ended up serving most of her sentence on weekends and was even given permission to decorate her cell, which she painted pink. When her diary was eventually returned to her, she allegedly burned it. Many in Aspen believed that Claudine was guilty of murder, but on her release from jail, Claudine said, I would like to say again I am not guilty and should not have been sentenced to 30 days in jail or one day. Claudine's reputation suffered again when it was revealed one of her lawyers, Ron Austin, left his wife and two children for Claudine before she had even served her sentence. Claudine and Ron eventually married in 1985. Spider's family filed a civil lawsuit against Claudine in May 1977. Sources vary on how much the lawsuit was worth. It was between $700,000 and $1.3 million. The lawsuit was settled out of court in September 1979, but no financial transaction was made. Claudine was only required to keep quiet on the topic of Spider's death. Vladimir Sr. said, I wasn't looking for money. I kept her from publishing a book. Spider's death and the subsequent conviction of Claudine remains a controversial topic for many. Claudine has stayed out of the spotlight since her release from jail and has never spoken about Spider. There are still many in Aspen, where Claudine still lives, who think that Spider's death was not an accident. Spider's parents and both of his siblings have since passed away. Many feel that District Attorney Frank Tucker summed up the controversy surrounding this case when he said, Celebrity goes in the front door and justice goes out the back door.